relevant uh, considering the uh, happening right now in the world events. Uh, this particular topic we have posted in the Facebook, okay, we got at least 680,000 impressions, okay, when you say impressions, they most likely they have seen the uh, advertisement, okay, and we got 250 comments, maybe some of you uh, posted their comments there, no? okay, and we had 650 shares. Okay. And 36,000 post engagements. When you say post engagement, uh, maybe they click the invitation and they just look at it, that's the whole, and they've read the whole invitation. That is around 36,000 post engagements. Okay? And I think for the past months that we've been advertising, advertising the uh, Bible study, this one I think got the second highest. Okay? Uh, impressions and the first uh, the, the the highest was when we discussed about during the Mother's Day okay so it seems that if the topic is relevant okay and significant with the with the events okay it seems that people are really interested so we assume that all of you that are here today and watching our online live streaming uh, they are very much interested about uh, prophecy Right? So before we start, we will have uh, three special music renditions. The first one is Thy Perfect Will Be Done, uh, to be rendered by Miss Karen Espiloy. The second one is Be Thou My Vision, by Justin Hapitan and Bebe Melumida. And the third one is We Have a Story to Tell to the Nation, by Joshua Modeno. After the special music rendi renditions, Mr. Ferdi Padilla will lead us in the opening prayer, and Mr. Winston Cobb will take the uh, first part of the Bible study. Thank you. 
Let all stand up and bow our heads. <coughs> Eternal Sovereign Father, we thank you once again, Father, for this opportunity to learn from your word, Father. We thank you so much for the blessings that you have given us the past week and for your uh, care for us and our loved ones and our families. Father, today we ask you to bless this uh, Bible study as we study, as we try to learn, Father, uh, the prophetic events that you have foretold. Father, we know that no prophecy is open for human interpretation. So therefore, Father, we ask you to be with us, guide us, so that we may learn, Father, the, the real truth in light of your word, Father. Uh, because only then uh, we would understand all of these things that are happening today. Father, we ask you to be with us, and uh, we now submit Everything, Father, into your hands. In Jesus' name, ask all these things. Amen. Good afternoon to everyone. Well, this is the month of uh, July, the start of the rainy season. So, medyo uso, uso na yung sipon, ubo. Well, nakiuso na rin ako. So yeah, so uh, this afternoon, uh, we will talk about Bible prophecy. Our objective this afternoon is to bring clarity to Bible prophecy. Prophecy is interesting and it is a blessing if we understand it. Revelation, the book of Revelation in uh, chapter 1, starting from verse 1, writes, the revelation from Jesus Christ, well, the book of Revelation is not the revelation of John, the apostle, but it is a revelation of Jesus Christ given to John. He said here, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angels to his servant, John, 
who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed. So there is a blessing attached okay, to this particular book and to the readers. He said, Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it. Because the time is here. So there is a particular blessing that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ pronounced upon the readers of this book of Revelation. You know, and this blessing comes with it. The understanding of the events that shall soon take place. Bible prophecy is proof that God exists and His written words are true. As Christians, our understanding and interpretation of Bible prophecy needs to be as accurate as possible. And as mentioned earlier in the prayer, you know, prophecy is not subjected to human or personal interpretation. Okay? And since the prophecy is carried, you know, is written and carried by the Spirit of God, so the interpretation must be within the context of God's Holy Spirit. Jesus told us to watch world events and to pray that we may be able to escape the coming tribulations or the events that shall soon take place. And in Luke chapter 21, in verse 36, we read, as Jesus said, Be always on the watch. Watch what? Means watch all events. And pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Since the time of the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, people have tried to understand what the prophetic timeline is. Okay? Are we nearing the end time? And in fact, uh, the disciples asked of Jesus, you know, when you remember the account of Acts, when Jesus was taken into heaven, they asked Jesus when he will restore the kingdom. You know, and Jesus said that the time, you know, is with the Father, and our job is to preach the gospel. So recently, you know, when we watch recent events, many people ask and they think about these end time prophecies. So what do we have in recent years? We have the 2008 U.S. financial crisis. We saw the uh, September 11 attack on the um, World Trade Center. Recent years, we witnessed the rise of ISIS, the uh, Brexit, the exit of Britain from the European Union, and of course, you are very familiar with the global warming, the El Nino, the La Nina phenomenon that we experience. And we have the humanitarian crisis in Africa, the escalating Middle East conflict. And of course, we have the presidential election in the U.S., the election of the U.S. President Donald Trump. And when you search on your web, you see a lot of prophetic things being said about him. And then you have the U.S. recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And then you have the recent U.S. and North Korea summit. And then, of course, the glooming, a looming global trade wars and so on and so forth. So when you look at these world events and people say, hey, where are we now? Are we nearing the end? prophesied in the scripture. So today we will not us, but you will determine okay, where we are now in prophecy. Okay. 
we will lay out the prophetic timeline for you and you will decide where we are in that prophetic timeline. Okay? Is that fair? So we won't be telling you where we are. You will tell us where we are in the timeline of biblical prophecy. And our basis would be the book of the Revelation. But before we go there, we will attempt to do three things today. Okay, so this is quite a lengthy uh, message and we have broken down it into three parts. And the first part is the understanding okay, of the difference between the biblical last days and the day of the Lord. Okay. Is there a difference? Is there a distinction you know, between the last days and the day of the Lord. So when you read your Bible and it says in the last days, is that different from when you read the scripture, the day of the Lord? Okay. So we will talk about that. And the second is to understand the end time prophetic timeline. Okay. Because when you read Matthew chapter 24, the Olivet prophecy, okay, it's quite broad. So, how do you interpret a broad uh, prophecy? So, Jesus Christ came and revealed the detailed account of the prophetic timeline. And that is written in the book of Revelation. So, we will try to understand in item number two, the prophetic timeline as written in the book of Revelation. Okay. And thirdly, after we have done the first and the second, you now will tell us where we are now in prophecy. Okay? Fair? Okay, let's go there. So I'll take the first part, the last days and the day of the Lord. The Bible talks about the last days and the day of the Lord. And the question we'd like to ask this afternoon is, is the last days synonymous to the day of the Lord? Yeah. We believe that key to understanding the prophetic timeline is to understand the difference between the two because there is a difference between the two. Most churches, and I'm sure some of us in this room, believe that the last days is synonymous to the day of the Lord. He said the last days are the day of the Lord. Isaiah, they are one and the same. They're talking about the same events, you know. But we want to tell you that it is a wrong and erroneous misunderstanding. The day of the Lord is different from the last days, and the last days is different from the day of the Lord. So when talking of the last days, many, many erroneously think about a momentous event when all these things happen in an instant, in a short, quick uh, moment. Right? So we say, hey, during the last days, mukhang in the future, and everything will happen very quickly. Okay? Just like, you know, the day of the Lord. And there are basically two scriptures I would like to point out when people have that kind of an idea. Uh, they get this idea from Isaiah chapter 2 and Joel chapter 2 as well. So when people read Isaiah chapter 2 in verse 2 and Joel chapter 2 in verse 28, they conclude that the last days lies in the future towards the end of the age. The unveiling of the great tribulation followed by the return of Jesus Christ. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2. He said, and we read, He said, In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream into it. Okay, so when we read this, we talk about him. Yeah, mm hmm. This is talking about the very end time, okay? Maybe even towards the 
establishment of the millennial uh, reign of Christ. Okay? And then we read in Joel chapter 28, he said, Afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Eh? Definitely, this is not today. This is some time yet in the distant future. And that's what people try to conclude. However, a careful study of the scripture suggests the opposite. The last days seem to suggest a long period of time. In fact, the last days started with the first advent, with the first coming with the, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? So how can we come to that conclusion that the last days started 2,000 years ago and we are currently living in the last days? So how can we conclude that? Well, because the scripture says so. So I want you to go to the following scriptures. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. The writer of the Hebrews said, Say, in the past, what past? In ancient times, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heirs of all things, and through whom also He made the universe. Okay. So this verse clearly states that the last days started with the first coming, with the first advent of Christ. Okay. Clearly, establish that. And this is further confirmed in Hebrews chapter 9, the same book, in verse 26. He said, Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But He has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages. Yeah. Referring to the last days, to do away with sin by the sacrifice of Himself. The, the scripture describes the redemptive act of Jesus as happening in the last days. And again in Acts chapter 2, at Pentecost, Peter quoted from Joel's prophecy, which we read earlier, Joel chapter 2. Peter testified that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the day of Pentecost in 31 A.D., was the fulfillment of the last day's prophecy spoken of by the prophet Joel. Therefore, we are living in the last days, and the last days has, has begun. In Acts 2, chapter 14, we read, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. So fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk because people think that they were drunk and they were speaking in, in uh, gibberish talk, right? That they were drunk. So as you suppose, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning, he said. No, this is what was spoken of by the prophet Daniel. He said, what you see today, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. Okay, so what is this prophetic fulfillment that Peter said happened on this fateful day of Pentecost in 31 AD? He said, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all the people. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even all my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. So Peter said, this prophecy of the last days happened today. 
Okay. Peter referenced the Pentecost of 31 AD as in the last days. The fulfillment of Joel's prophecy. And interestingly, he con when we continue in Acts 19, Peter said, I will show you wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. And the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. He said, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. So there is a difference. There is a last day and there is the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Two separate events, he said. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Clearly, this is another reference of the difference between the last days and the day of the Lord. And I'll try to explain that later. Now we go to 1 Peter in chapter 1 and in verse 20. Peter wrote, he said, He was chosen before the creation of the world. Who was chosen before the creation of the world? Jesus Christ but was revealed in these last times or last days for your sake so when was these last days the first advent of christ that is the start of the last days that's why it's last days plural long period of time and in james chapter 5 we read your wealth has rotted, and moths have eaten your clothes. Your golds and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you. Who are these people? You. And eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you fail to pay the workers who moan your fields are crying out against you the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the lord almighty when was this future present or when when james said this it was during james time it is an obvious reference to the apostolic apostolic time right the verses quoted have clearly indicated that the term last days started during the first advent of Jesus Christ up to the present you know and it will end to, and it will continue until everything is fulfilled therefore we are living in the last days because the last days started with the first advent of our lord and savior Jesus Christ okay so, how about the day of the Lord? Aren't they one and the same? No, they are not. Okay? The day of the Lord is a separate and distinct event from the last days. Okay? I want you to consider the following verses. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's start from verse 1. He said, Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the lord will come like a thief in the night future will come and no one knows like a thief while people are saying peace and safety destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape so paul specifically relate the day of the lord to the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and again in 2nd Thessalonians the second chapter he said say concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ clear coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him the resurrection we ask you brothers and sisters do not be do not become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter asserting that the day of the lord has already come 
Because at this particular time, people were speculating, you know, based on the first Thessalonians written by Paul, you know, people misinterpret it and say, hey, the day of the Lord is here. Okay? He said, oh, no, 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 no. The day of the Lord will not come. It's still in the future. You know? The coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord, His second coming is still in the future. Okay? But there's a marker. The marker is the man of sin has to be revealed first. If you continue that reading, that's what he will read. Okay? So, the coming of our Lord is referred to here in Scripture as Day of the Lord. Paul here contends that the Day of the Lord has not yet come, still in the future. See? Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man deemed to destruction. So it is very clear that the day of the Lord refers to the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that is still yet in the future. Okay? Am I clear? Do you agree? Huh? Are you convinced? Okay. If you're not convinced, let's go to this particular few verses. Okay. For a clearer understanding of the difference between the last days and the day of the Lord, you know, we can make a definite conclusion, you know, and reference to Second Peter chapter three and in verse ten. Okay. So within this verse. Peter fully explained the difference between the last days and the day of the Lord. Verse 3, Peter said, Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come. Scoffing, not coughing, you know, and following their evil desires. They will say, where is this coming he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. He said, during the last days, you know, people will make fun of the scripture. People will make fun of the prophecy. What is these last days? These last days was their time. The apostolic time. Okay, they were saying, when is the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Okay, so referencing to events. Okay, where is the coming that he promised? But they deliberately forget that long ago by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters... Also, the world of that time was deluged and was destroyed. He said, by the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. People say, in the last days, during the time of the apostles, people are asking, oh, when is the coming of the Lord? You know, and Peter said, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar and the elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. So when you read these verses, verses 3 to 10, you know that the time is very different. Okay? The last day started with the first advent of Christ 
And the day of the Lord refers to the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So you have the first coming, and then you have the second coming. The first coming is called the last days. The second coming is called the day of the Lord. Glorian. Now, once you understand this landscape, then it is easier to comprehend where we are now in history, okay, or in prophecy. So the last day started at the time of the first coming of Jesus Christ. And the day of the Lord refers to his second coming. Okay. This distinction will help you identify where we are now in Bible prophetic timeline. Okay? Now, to do this, the prophetic timeline, uh, I'll pass it on to uh, Mel, and uh, I'll come back for the, uh, uh, I, the, identif the identification of where we are now in prophecy. Thank you, Winston. Now we will be on the second part of the Bible study, the prophetic timeline. And this is a bit lengthy, so I want you to uh, stay awake, okay? And please take hold of your popcorn and fasten your seatbelt, okay? In Matthew chapter 24, we can read and we can find the famous Olivet prophecy. This is the prophecy that Jesus Christ gave in the Mount of Olives. And the disciples asked Jesus Christ at least three questions during the discussions. In Matthew chapter 24, let's start in verse 1. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings, referring to the temple. And he said, do you see all these things? He asked. Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. And as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. And they said, please tell us, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the age. So, in Matthew 24, in Olivet Prophecy, the disciples ask at least three questions. Three important questions about prophetic timeline. Okay. Number one is, when is the destruction of the temple? And we all know that the temple was destroyed by the Roman army led by General Titus in 70 AD and still lies ruined today, okay? If you go to Jerusalem today, if you go to Israel, you will see that the temple is still lies in ruin, okay? And that was destroyed in 70 AD. And the second question was, what are the signs of the end? And this question is actually refers to the last days. So what is the last days as mentioned by Mr. Winston Coe? The last days refers to the first advent of Christ until the day of the Lord. So that's the prophetic timeline. The last days from the first advent of Jesus Christ all the way to the time that he will come back. Okay? Because the third question was, what are the signs of Christ's second coming? And this question is actually refers to the day of the Lord. So there is this what we call the prophetic timeline. The second question refers to the last days, which started during the first advent of Christ and goes all the way from 2,000 years ago, all the way to our time. And the end of that is the day of the Lord, which is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, the response that Jesus gave to each question was precise and accurate. In Matthew chapter 24, in verses 4 to 14, 
It answers the question about the last days. While in Matthew chapter 24 in verses 15 to 31 answers the question about the day of the Lord. Okay. So let's read first the answer to the question about the last days. In Matthew chapter 24, let's start in verse 4. And Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and the kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are just the beginning of birth pains. So if you look history, 2,000 years backward, you will see all these things. And many will come in Jesus' name and they will claim that they are the Christ and will deceive many. And there are wars and rumors of wars. Diba? We have the World War I and the World War II and the ongoing small and little wars between nations. And nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there have been famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are just the beginning of birth pains. The end of the age or the last days has started but the end is not yet. It is just only the beginning of birth pains. While in Matthew chapter 24 in verses 15 to 25 refers to the timeline of the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is the Bible called the Day of the Lord. In verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation is spoken of through the prophet Daniel. Let the reader understand. It's talking of an event. That will happen and will take place in the holy place. Referring to the temple in Jerusalem. Okay? Referring to the holy city of God. And that is the abomination that causes de desolation. Which was also written by prophet Daniel. And he said, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. And let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. And let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. Why? Because the succeeding days will be terrible. Will be fearful. Okay? And for them there will be great distress. Unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equal again. And if those days had been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. And at, at that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah. Okay, if someone will tell you, the Messiah is in Davao. <laughs> or there he is. Do not believe it. Do not believe it. Okay. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. If possible, even the very elect. See, Jesus Christ said, I have told you ahead of time. So Jesus Christ was clearly talking about two distinct and separate events. Those are the last days that started with the first advent of Christ and the day of the Lord that is to start a time of the return or the second coming of Jesus Christ. Is that very clear to everyone? Very clear so far? Okay, again. Because the succeeding, you will fall asleep. Okay, it's lengthy. That's why we want just to make it very clear to all of you. And now we will go to the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
Since the time Jesus spoke about the sign of the end of the age, mankind has wanted to know the exact timing and the apocalyptic events that would lead to the end of the world. Diba? And people trying to calculate. Diba? And some people, okay, they've concluded that Jesus Christ will come. What was the last one? What was the last one that said that Jesus Christ will come? 2015? 2016? Diba? There was this prophecy, diba? That Jesus Christ will come now. Okay? Because people are really trying to calculate and try to find out what are the apocalyptic, apocalyptic events that would lead to the end of the world. Prophecies actually are not to be interpreted privately. It is not a personal matter. Okay? We must allow the Bible to interpret itself. Jesus did not leave the Olivet prophecy hanging. Okay? If you read the Olivet prophecy, okay, pag yun lang, it puzzled you. It will really puzzle you. When are we now in prophecy? If you just look at it that way. Okay? Kasi, pag lumindol, let's say, oh, people will say, ay na, something coming na. Okay? Pagka nagkaroon ng Tsunami! Ayan na! Second coming na. Right? O, pag mayroong mga super typhoon, di ba? Ayan na. Nandiyan na. Okay. Pag may pestilences, may mga mga diseases na lumabas, ayan na. Nandiyan na. People will always say that. Right? So, prophecies are not to be interpreted privately. We must allow the Bible to interpret itself. Jesus did not leave the Olivet prophecy hanging. Rather, He provided details to the prophecy. And that is in the book of Revelation. As written by John, but revealed by Jesus Christ Himself. Olivet prophecy given by Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation also revealed by Jesus Christ. Not the revelation of John. The book of Revelation of Jesus Christ is given to Apostle John concerning things that are soon to take place. Let's start in verse chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation from Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John who testifies to everything he saw and that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. Why? Because when you read aloud the words of prophecies, ibig sabihin lang nun na iintindihan mo. Because if you do not understand the prophecies of God, you will not tell it to other people. True or not? True or not? You watch television today. All the televangelists all other uh, religion or religions in this world will they tell you about prophecies? Because hardly they don't understand it. And he said, Who testifies to everything that is the word of God in the testimony of Jesus Christ? Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart what is written in it because the time is near. The book of Revelation reveals events that are soon to take place, a time in the future. It is a book that provides clarity and details to Jesus' Olivet prophecy. Parallel po siya. Okay? Nakaparallel siya. So what are the timings? Okay. The book of Revelation is not a book of mystery. As some people Say, no, don't read the book of Revelation. Mababaliw ka dyan. Okay? And some people, wag mong basahin. Nakakatakot yan. May halimaw dyan. That's what they tell you. Okay? It's not actually a book of mystery. It is a book that is intended to be understood by the readers. 
It is a book that contains the revelation of Jesus Christ to his servants or to his church. The book of Revelation is not difficult to understand. Who says that the book of Revelation is difficult to understand? Who says? Who says that it is not difficult to understand? Wala din. Okay? So let's just end this Bible study because neither you understand or you do not understand. Okay? Right? Or do not know. In the middle. Want to know or just we do not want to know. So Jesus shows us the blow by blow account of things that are to happen. The key to understanding the book of Revelation is to read it sequentially. Sequentially. The prophecy is actually laid out in three sets of seven. Okay? Hindi siya ocho, ocho, ocho. Siete, siete, siete. Three sets of seven. Okay? One set is the seven seals. The second set is the seven trumpets. And the third set is the seven plagues. Three sets of seven. Tandaan nyo. Kung meron kayo dapat tandaan sa book of Revelation, pag may tinanong kayo, basta ang alam ko, tatlo siyete dyan. Okay? That's the key. For you to understand, basta alam ko, tatlo siyete dyan. Tatlong seals, tatlong trompakakak, trompeta, ay, pito, pitong seals, pitong pakakak, okay, at pitong salot. Okay? Tatlong pito. Ano yung seals sa Tagalog? Ha? Selyo. O, tatlong selyo, at pitong selyo, pitong pakakak, at pitong salot. Tatlong pito. Pito, pito. Alam niyo, iniinaw, ano? Pito, pito. Oh, yeah. Dagdagan niyo pa ng isang pito. Pito, pito, pito. Okay? Hindi, kumain muna kayo ng pito, hindi niyo malulon, minom kayo ng pito, pito. Okay? So, only in this manner will, will you be able to appreciate and you fully comprehend the prophecies revealed by Jesus to His people throughout or through Apostle John. Let's start with the seven seals. Okay? If you read Revelation chapter 4, and we will not go there, okay, there is the one sitting on the throne on his right hand. He has a scroll. And that scroll has seven seals. And it seems that no one is worthy to open the seals. That's why John wept. Okay? But he was stopped by one of the elders. And he, said, and he said, no, there is one who is worthy to open the scroll and the seals. And who's that one? The Lamb, Jesus Christ. Okay? And that's very true. That's why the revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. He is the only one worthy to open the seals and reveal what's in them. What's in it. Okay? That's like the scroll with the seven seals. Okay, not the seven dwarfs. Huh? Seven seals. Okay. So in summary, these are the seven. Ay, hindi kita. Huh? Dito, sa side na to. Hindi kita. Okay. Yan. Okay, so let's pause for one hour. Okay. Yan. Okay, so mas kita, right? So this is the summary of the seven seals. Okay? Which we will go one by one. Okay, that's why this is lengthy. I'll tell you, tatlo yung pito, di ba? Okay, yung pitong, tatlong pito na yun, dadaanan natin lahat yun. Are, is that okay with you? Yes. Are you with us? Do we have coffee there? Okay, you can take some coffee. Okay? So that you will not fall asleep. So this is the summary. Okay? And we will go one by one. 
We'll go back to the summary. Okay? Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 6 in verse 1 to 2. And I watch as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come! I look and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror, bent on conquest. So this is the first seal. What is the first seal? White castle. The white horse pala. Okay. What is a white castle? Ano yun? Whiskey, di ba? And then white horse ito, not white. White castle, kasi yung matalaslas nun, di ba? Yung nakasakay sa white horse. Remember that? Hindi niya natandaan. Bata pa kayo. So that is actually the first seal. The first seal is religious deception. Okay? It started during the time of the apostles after the death of Christ and continues until today and into the future. That's why you have you you can see a lot of religions today. And what we're talking here is Christian religion. Huh? We're not talking of outside Christianity. We're talking of religions who are claiming that Jesus was the Christ. And yet they are deceiving people with their teachings and doctrines. Okay? And that is the first seal. Parallel yan, Matthew 24 in verse 4 and 5 and Revelation 6 verses 1 and 2. Okay? <coughs> then in Revelation 6 in verse 3 to 4, When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come! Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. So red horse. Okay? Kayo nagsabi niya, hindi ako ha? Red horse. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. So what is the second seal? It is war. As mentioned by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 in verses 6 and 7. That's in parallel with what we have read. Revelation 6 verses 3 and 4. War. More frequent and more devastating over the years after 70 AD. Now war threatens even the very existence of mankind. Because all nations are now preparing for their own nuclear weapons. And even biological warfare. All of them are preparing. And here in the Philippines, we are just preparing. <laughs> I don't know for what. Okay? So that's the second seal. Now, Revelation chapter 6 in verse 5 to 6. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. I look, and there before me was a black label. I did it. Black horse. Okay, it's a black horse. His rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages and six pounds of barley for a day's wages. And do not damage the oil and the wine. So what is the third seal? Famine. It represents famine. Okay? And that can also be read in Matthew chapter 24 in verse... Seven. Famine now threatens global food shortage and worldwide famine. Why? Because of the fast increasing population of the whole world. That's why we are still blessed today. Because we can still eat three meals a day and three snacks. <laughs> diba? Three snacks kayo, diba? Okay? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then you have snacks. AM snack, PM snack, and midnight snack. Because you're watching... Diba? Oh, diba? Oh, TV. You're watching Korean a bit. Okay? So that's famine. Now let's go to the fourth seal. 
When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come! I look and there before me was a pale, pale sail. Ay, hindi. Pale horse. Pale horse. Ay, kung di ka naman pala talaga mahilo dito sa apat na horse na to eh, di ba? And it's called the four horsemen of the apocalypse, di ba? White, red, black, pale. Nako, hilong-hilo ka dyan. Pag sinunod mo, ininom yan. Okay? It's a pale horse. Its rider was named Death. And Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a part of the earth to kill by sword, famine and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. So what is the port seal? Disease, epidemics, deaths. Okay. The worst epidemics happened in the last 1,000 years and sure to get worse over the not too distant future. Okay. So what are the recent epidemics? Remember the bubonic plagues? Okay. And I don't know, Bill Gates said in the future we will have another one. Okay, and he's predicting that. Okay. So we're looking for another disease or epidemics that will kill most of the people. And that also can be read in Matthew chapter 24 in verse 7. Then on the fifth seal, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? The fifth seal is... Then each of them was given a white robe and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. So the fifth seal is talking about the tribulation and the persecution of the true church. Church went underground to survive protection and migrated to the new world where it flourishes again for a period, and yet the true church remains small, ostracized, and fragile. That's why the true church of God, if you will see, they're always called the little flock. Why? Because they are always persecuted over time. Okay? Never it happened that it, they, they grew so large. Okay. So the fifth seal is talking of a great tribulation and the persecution of the church in the end. And that can also be read in Matthew chapter 24, 8-12. The sixth seal. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to earth, as figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by strong wind. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves and among the rocks, of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of the wrath has come, and who can withstand it? And that's in Revelation chapter 6 and verses 12 to 17. And that is the sixth seal. It's talking of the heavenly signs. We see major meteorological changes in recent years. The climate change causes severe weather changes with super hurricanes, super typhoons, cyclones, tornadoes, super chills, hails, El Nino and La Nina. Nothing yung El Nino, it occurs 
every 50 years, every 25 years, every 10 years, every 5 years. Now it's almost every year. The same thing with La Nina. The amount of the rain water, the volume causes by the La Nina, it's really staggering. Which in turn, it causes severe droughts. It's either droughts or flooding. And it is very devastating. The depletion of the ocean la la layer together with global warming will bring this about and towards the end we can see the intensified heavenly signs i just read in the facebook uh, two days ago that the ice in the Antar antarctic is really fast melting than compared to 10 or 15 or 20 years ago okay and it will soon have a devastating effect to the whole world and that is what written in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29 in Revelation 6 12 to 17 talking about the sixth seal so nakaanib na tayo di ba yung scroll may first seal may second seal may third seal may fourth may fifth may sixth and the seventh seal the seventh seal is actually the seven angels sounding the seven trumpets. So, nung binukas yung seven seal, another set of seven. Seven trumpets. Pitong pakakang. Sa Tagalog. Okay? So, what are the seven trumpets? Okay? And now, we will start with the second set of Seven. Tapos na tayo sa first set. These are the seven seals. Now we are on the second set of seven. Seven trumpets. So this is the summary of the seven trumpets. But we will go and we will read each trumpet. Okay? Let's go to the first one. The first angel sounded his trumpet and there came hail and fire mixed with blood and it was hurled down on the earth a third of the earth was burned up a third of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burned up and that is the talking of the first trumpet one third of the land destroyed that is the first trumpet okay the second one Revelation chapter 8, verses 8 to 9. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. And a third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. So what is the second trumpet? What will happen? The devastation of one third of the oceans and the sea life that is the second trumpet now let's go to revelation chapter 8 and verses 10 to 11 the third angel sounded his trumpet and a great star blazing like a like a torch fell from the sky on the third of the rivers and on the springs of water the name of the star is wormwood a third of the waters turned bitter and many people died from the waters that had become bitter so what is the third trumpet devastation of the one third of the rivers and the fresh water life okay that's the third trumpet what is the fourth trumpet and the fourth angel sounded his trumpet and a third of the sun was struck and a third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them turned black or turned dark a third of the day was without light and also a third of the night okay. so the fourth trumpet is heavenly signs where one third turned dark okay. 
What is the fifth trumpet? The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, the smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. Can you imagine that? And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. And during those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts look like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers like scorpions, and in their tails, they had power to torment people for five months. They had a king over them, the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek is Apollyon. And that is meaning the destroyer. And it's called the first Wu. The fifth trumpet is called the first woo also. And two other woos are yet to come. So what is the fifth trumpet? Human affliction. Okay, so people in this earth will be afflicted for five months. Okay. Now we go to the sixth. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet and I heard the voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour, and the day and the month and the, month and the year, were released to kill a third of mankind. And the number of the mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. And the horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the roses, horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. And a third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. And the power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails. For their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. So what then is the sixth trumpet? It's war. Wherein one third of humanity will die. And that is, that is the second book. And then we go to the seventh trumpet. When the seventh trumpet was blown, it has seven plates. And now we will go to the third set of seven. Pitong salad. Seven plates. Okay. Seven balls of plates. Poured out. Kabo? Poured out. Okay? So these are, this is the summary of the seven ball of plates. And we will read one, each, each one by one. Okay? The first angel went and poured out his ball on the land, and ugly, festering source broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worship 
its image. This is in Revelation chapter 16 in verse 2. So what then is the first plague? Painful source. And yan source sa Tagalog? Pigsa? Ha? Pigsa lang ba? Boils yun eh. Source. Skin disease yan, ay? Singaw. Pwede singaw. Singaw nasa labas. Sugat, source, it's all in all parts of your body with all the source there. Okay? And it's very, very painful. Okay. Then the second angel poured out his ball on the sea and it turned into blood like that of a dead person. And every living thing in the sea died. Nung nauna, one third lang. Ito, every living thing died. Okay. So the second plague is the sea totally becoming blood. Okay. And we go to the third plague. The third angel poured out his ball on the rivers and springs of water and they became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the water say, you are just in this judgment, O Holy One, you who are and who were. For they have shed the blood of your people, of your holy people and your prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar respond, Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. So what is the third plague? After the sea becoming blood in the second plague, the third plague is the river becoming flood. Okay? The natural sea waters became flood, blood as well. The fourth plague. The fourth angel poured out his, all, his ball on the sun, and the sun was allowed to scorch people with fire. Wow! Super heat. Ng araw. They were seared by the intense heat and they cursed the name of God who had control over these plagues. But they refused to repent and glorify Him. You see, these plagues are for people to repent and go back to God. And yet these people refuse to repent and glorify God. Wow, it's scorching heat, the fourth plague. Fiery. Sun. Diba ngayon, pag tag-init, sobra. Sakit sa balat, sobrang pawis. Maglakad ka lang ng ilang konti. Pawis na pawis ka. Wala yun. Pag dumating ito. Grabing init nito. Okay? Grabe. Okay. Now we go to the fifth plague. And the fifth angel poured out his ball on the throne of the beast and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. And people nod their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. But they refused to repent of what they had done. So what is the fifth plague? Darkness and pain. Can you imagine total darkness and you are in pain? Diba? Oh, may punong-punong ka ng sores. Tapos ang dilim-dilim nung lalakaran mo, pag nagbanggaan kayo, sobrang sakit. Can you imagine that? It's like just you seeing people para na zombie. With all the sores, with all the pains in the body, and yet you're groping in the dark. Right? And the sixth angel poured out his ball on the great river Euphrates. And its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are demonic spirits that perform signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Look, I come like a thief. 
Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains unclothed, so as not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. Then they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Okay. So what is the sixth plague? Madness for battle. Okay, may umikot na masamang ispirito. Okay, to all the kings of the world. Okay, to have this battle, madness for battle. Okay, and they are all preparing for a great battle, which is called Armageddon. And that's the sixth plague. And the last plague, the seventh angel poured out his ball into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. In Revelation 16, verses 17 to 21, then there came flashes of lightnings, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since mankind has been on earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. And every island fled away and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds. Can you ever imagine that? Okay, gano'n ka bigyan yan? Hundred pounds times fifty kilos? Wow! Kasi you divided by two, no? 2.6 ba? Something? 2.2, okay? So, 100 divided by 2, almost 50 kilos. Okay lang sana kung bigas yung babagsak. Eh. O asukal, no? O kape, niko, o trimmer. O, may pasupply tayo dito, but it's hailstones. O, dalawang sako. Di ba? Can you ever imagine that? Each weighing about 100 pounds fell on people. And they cursed God on account of the plague of hail. Because the plague was so terrible. So terrible. So what is the seventh plague? Natural, phenomenal disasters. Okay? That people will die. Okay? So when reading the book of Revelation sequentially, Something of prophetical significance happens before the seven trumpet and the seven balls of plague. Ano yun? So when we said, di ba? There, there are three sets of seven. When you read them sequentially, seven seals, on the seven seal, there is the seven trumpets. On the seven trumpets, there is the seven plagues. If you read that sequentially, from Revelation 6 all the way to Revelation 8, okay, there is something of prophetical significance happened before the seven trumpets and before the seven balls of plague. And what is that? What is that? The two events are the sealing of the 144,000 and the arrival of the two witnesses. That's why if you read Revelation, okay, pag binasa mo, oh, bakit parang bibiglang nag-pop up na mga istorya dyan? Bakit mayroong sealing ng 144,000? And then pagdating dito sa kabila, oh, bakit naman sa Revelation 11, bakit may pinag-uusapang two witnesses? Right? So if you read sequentially, these two events, very evident. Very significant. Very significant. Okay. And just to illustrate, okay. before the seven trumpets, after the seven seals, there is the sealing of the 144,000. Right? Tama? Okay. And after the seven trumpets, before the seven plagues, there is the appearance of the two witnesses. There is this war in heaven. There is the persecution of the church. And there is the appearance of the beast 
and the false prophet. Okay? So look at this prophetic timeline. Picture nyo. Okay? The illustration might not be that good. Okay? But at least you see the significance, right? You get it? There are three sets of seven. Okay? After the first set, there is the sealing of the 144,000 before the second set. After the second set, before the third set of seven, you have these events. The appearance of the two witnesses, war in heaven, persecution of the church, and appearance of the beast and the false prophet. And we will go through it. Revelation 7, the sealing of the 144,000 and a great multitude will happen immediately before the blowing of the trumpet. And why? Why it has to happen? Okay, why it has to happen before the blowing of the trumpets? Okay. And let's read. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Before the harming, before the blowing of the trumpets where the destruction will start, let me seal first my people. God said. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. One religion sect. They claiming they are the 144,000. And when the membership exceeded in 144,000, they don't know who will be part or not. <laughs> right? And they said when they eat the bread and they partake of the wine, that is a member of the 144,000. That's foolishness. From the tribe of Judah, you have 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, you have 12,000. From the tribe of God, you have 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, you have 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, you have 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, you have 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, you have 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. So 12,000 times 12 tribes, 144,000. The 144,000 are the tribes of Israel. His sons. Okay, the descendants of the sons of Israel or Jacob. And after this, I look, and there before me was a great multitude. Not only the 144 was sealed, because they are from the tribes of Israel, but there is this great multitude, great number of people that no one could count. From every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders of, and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and they worshipped God and saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? Who are they? And where did they come from? And I answered, Sir, you know? And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white 
in the blood of the Lamb. They are talking to the people of God. And most likely, some were converted, were repented because they have suffered the great tribulation. And these are multitude in numbers. If we are still alive during that time that will happen, make sure you will be part of the multitude. That you have continued to wash your robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. Okay? Therefore, they said, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will shelter them with His presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. Remember the plague of the fiery sun? They will not affect these people. These people will not okay, experience that. Because God has put them the protection, the ceiling. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Then in Revelation 11, in verses 1 to 6, this is the second event that is happening. So the first event that we have read is the sealing of the 144,000 and the great multitude. Right? This is before the blowing of the trumpets. Remember? There is another event after the blowing of the trumpet, before the plagues. What is that? The appearance of the two witnesses. And that's in Revelation chapter 11. I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, Go and measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshippers. But exclude the altar court, do not measure it, because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. Okay? So what will be happen? Events that prior to the seven plagues? In Revelation 11, 1 to 6, we can read the appearance of the two witnesses on the scene. No like Mike. And there is this Revelation chapter 12 in verses 7 to 9. There is a war in heaven. And in Revelation chapter 12 in verses 13 to 17, there is this, the great persecution of the church. And in Revelation chapter 13, in verses 1 to 18, it is the rise of the beast and the false prophet. Can you hear me at the back, people at the back? Can you hear me? Even without microphone? Yeah, later I will cough na. <laughs> okay? Nawalan nang. Did we pay our bill? <laughs> Advance. Advance tayo mag-isip. Hello. Hello. Ganun din eh. Nawala. Naputulan tayo ng kuryente. Okay. Kadumating yung miral ko. Hello. Meron na? Hello. Okay. So these are the events prior to the prior to the seven plagues. After the seven trumpets, before the seven plagues, this will happen, these events. The two witnesses will appear on the scene. The two witnesses are the people of God. Okay? Don't get it wrong. There are two sets of two powerful people in the end. The one set is the beast and the false prophet, and the other set is the two witnesses. Okay? Do not side on the beast and the false prophet. Side on the two witnesses. They are the people of God. Okay? Then in Revelation 12, in verse 7 and 9, there's a war in heaven. The last attempt to overthrow God. Okay? Which will be stayed by the devil. And in Revelation 12, 13 to 17, because the war in heaven did not succeed, the last attempt did not succeed, the devil and his angels 
will go now and persecute the church. Will go now to the church. And in Revelation 13 in verses 1 to 8, we can see the rise of the beast and the false prophet. Meron na? Okay, bayad na tayo. So let's go each and every one of these events. In Revelation 11 and 1 to 6, well, let's start in verse 3. And I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days. That is three and a half years. They will clot in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands, and they stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. That's how powerful they will be. Okay? And they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. And that's the two witnesses. And that's the power that they will have, that God will give them. And there is this what we call the war in heaven. Revelation chapter 12 in verses 7 to 9. Then war broke out in heaven. Okay. May war din dun. Okay. While watching wars and rumors of wars here on earth, there is also war in heaven. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. So after that, Binato. Okay? Earth. Ano pinagbuntungan nila ng galit? They went to persecute the church. And that's why there is this great persecution of the church. Revelation 12 in verses 13 to 17. And when the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for a time. Times and half a time. Out of the serpent's reach. Okay? What is time, times, and half a time? Three and a half years. The church will be protected. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of his offspring. And though, who are these, her offsprings? These are those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. No, wala talaga, no? Okay. Then, another event. The rise of the beast and the false prophet. Okay? Revelation 13 in verses 1 to 18. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on its horns, and on each head as a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great 
authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed, and the whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. People worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast, and they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? And who can wage war against it? That's how powerful the beast will be. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. Okay? It's opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. And it was given power to wage war against God's holy people. And to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. That all inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. All whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb was slain from the creation of the world. And whoever has ears, let them hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword they will be killed. And this calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf. And made the earth and its inhabitants worship the beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs, it, has, it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast. It deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image in honor, in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And the second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. And it also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to, a mark, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, talking of the mark of the beast, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. And this calls for wisdom. Let the person who was inside calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and that number is six, six. So there you go. Okay. Yung event na pinansa natin, di ba? The appearance of the two witnesses. How long will they be? 1,260 days. That is three and a half years. The church will be protected for time, times, and half a time. That is three and a half years. And the appearance of the beast and the false prophet, they will reign over all the earth for how many months? 42 months. That is three and a half years. So those things that will happen, you count. Nakita mo lumabas yung two witnesses, the church will now be protected and you have the beast also in the false prophet. I, as I told you, there are two sets of two powerful beings that will be seen by all the people of the earth in this world. Okay? The two witnesses and the beast and the false prophet. Timeline yan. Timeline yan. You count. Pare pareho yan. Three and a half years. 1,260 days, two witnesses, the protection of the church for time, half a time, and times, and the beast and the false prophet for 42 months. Sabay-sabay po yan. 
Sabay sabay you count three and a half years. And towards the end of the plagues, there is the death of the two witnesses. Okay? And then there is the great battle of Armageddon, which is prior to the return of Jesus Christ. So the death of the two witnesses, Revelation chapter 11 in verses 7 to 12, describes the death of the two witnesses three and a half years or three and a half days after. So when they were uh, they were killed, you count three and a half days, not three and a half years, huh? Okay? The two witnesses will be prophesying and will send plagues to all over the earth for three and a half years. And then they will be killed. Then you count three and a half days. Jesus Christ will return. Okay? So, wag kayong magkakamali, ah. Ang kakampihan nyo, yung pinatay. Hindi yung pumatay. Okay? Bakit? Yun ang bitay, di ba yung pinapatay? Okay? So, after that, darating yung tunay na bida. After three and a half days, Jesus Christ. And there is a battle of Armageddon. So, three and a half days after the death of the true witnesses is the return of Jesus Christ. In Revelation 11, verse 7, Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the beast will attack them and overpower and kill them. Okay? Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was sacrificed or crucified. For three and a half days, some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies, and they refuse them burial. So, di nila inilibing. Nandiyan lang sa street. Okay? The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts to one to one. Bakit? Eh, yun ang pahirap sa mga tao. Napatay na. Because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them. And they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here! Why? Because it's already the resurrection of the saints. And Jesus Christ is already coming. And they went up to heaven in a cloud where their enemies look on. Then you see the coming of Christ. Parang di na ako natapos dito sa harapan. Kailangan daw medyo matagal akong malayo sa kanya para hindi ako mahawa. Diba? Meron siyang cold, diba? Okay. Revelation chapter 19 and verses 11 to 16. Then I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse. White horse ulit. But this one represents the true Christ. Whose rider is called the faithful and true. With justice he judges and wages war. And his eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe deep in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of kings and the Lord of lords. Talking of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Then you will have the Armageddon. The great battle of Armageddon. Revelation chapter 9 verses 17 to 21. And I saw an angel standing in the sun 
who cried the loud voice to all the birds flying in midair. Come, gather people, or gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of the kings, the generals and the mighty, of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. Then I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured and with it the false puppet who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. And the two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning then the rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider on the horse and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh in a best time then you have the resurrection of the saints Revelation 20 in verses 1 to 5 and they saw an angel coming down out of heaven having the key to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain he says the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to, him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. And I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its remark or mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. And this is the first resurrection. Wow! So you see the timeline, the prophetic timeline? Three sevens. The seven seals. The seven trumpets. On the seventh seal, you have the seven trumpets. On the seventh trumpet, you have the seven plagues. Okay? But prior to the blowing of the trumpets, there is the sealing of the 144,000. Right? After the trumpets, before the plagues, okay, what do you have? Huh? What do you have? Huh? Nakalimutan niya na. Huh? The two witnesses. There are these events, di ba? The two witnesses, there is war in heaven, okay? Then you have the church protected. Then you have the beast and the false prophets. Three and a half years yeah. going or prior to the coming of Jesus Christ. Okay? Then after that, you will have these events. Diba? You have the beast and the false prophet. Then you will have the death of the, seven, the two witnesses. Then you have the rise of the beast of the... Uh, the uh, I mean the uh, what do you call this? Huh? The Armageddon, the Battle of Armageddon. Then you will have the return of Jesus Christ. Then the resurrection of the saints. So that's the prophetic timeline. If you read Revelation sequentially, you cannot be wrong, right? Tama? But the third question that you would like. To discuss this afternoon is on that prophetic timeline that we have discussed. Where are we now in prophecy? Okay, and I'll turn back the table to Mr. Bo. Now, with that, uh, and this, with the understanding of the prophetic timeline, it is not difficult to identify where we are now in prophecy, right? Okay. So when you look at this, 
it is not difficult for us to identify where we are in Proverbs. Okay. So, nasa kaya tayo? Right. So, if you have your Bible with you, I want you to open your Bible. Or if you have memorized the book of Revelation, you don't have to do that kasi nasa memory nyo na. Okay. When you talk about the seals, okay, the seven seals, what chapter is that? Huh? Seven seals. Revelation chapter 6. Eh, yung trumpets, ano yung chapter? 8 and 9, right? So, there is a missing, there is a chapter in between. Ano yung 7? It talks about the sealing of the 144,000. So that's how you read it sequentially. Chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, and 9. How about the plagues? The seven plagues, anong chapter yan? 16. Right? So in between 16 and 9, you have your 11, 12, uh, 11, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Which is in between the 8 and the 9 and the 16. Sequentially, you just read it. And then you have the death of the two witnesses, which is part of the 11. And then you have your battle of Magadon. And then you have the return of Christ, which is what? Revelation chapter 19 and 20. So when you read sequentially, this is how it will come up. Okay? Now, and we know what the seventh trumpet is, right? The seventh trumpet is the destruction of one third of the land, the sea, the fresh water system, and mankind. Okay? So you have seven trumpets. Destruction of one third of the land, the sea, the fresh water system and the death of one-third of mankind. Have you seen that? Not yet. Huh? Not yet. Not yet. So we are not yet here. Right? Oh, are we here already? Not yet. Not yet. And we know that the ceiling of the 144,000 is prior to this time because God's people will be protected. Right? right. Have you seen this one already? Not yet. So that means we are during the period of the seals. Right? So where are we now in the period of the seals? Okay? So we say that definitely we are not yet in the period of the trumpets. Which you are right, right? So where are we now? So we must be in the periods of the seals. And we know that the four horsemen of Apocalypse, they have been riding since the time of the Apostles. Therefore, we are living somewhere in between the fifth and the sixth. Kasi yung seventh seal is the trumpet. Okay? And this would be the most conservative view for all of us. So we are living somewhere in here. Okay? The persecution of the church and the heavenly signs. Okay? So the intensity will get more and more. It will get more intense and it will be, you know, more severe. Okay? The heavenly signs will be, you know, you have more of that, more intensity, you know, and in severity. So we are living 
fear. Okay? In this time. Okay? Maybe we are on the fifth going to the sixth. Or at the very beginning of the sixth seal. The first six seals occurred over a long period of time. Right? 2,000 years. Right? Because we said that the last days started with the first seal being opened when Jesus Christ returned to heaven. And it has been almost 2,000 years. So, the period of the seal is long period. You know? And God has reason for this. Peter said it is to give us time to repent. Right? We read this in Peter when we read earlier. The end time signs are warnings to call people re to repentance before that dreadful day of the Lord. And this is what we read earlier in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8 and 9. The reason for this long period is that do not forget this one thing Peter said, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is just like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise. God is with 2,000 years. Where is the return of your Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? When is He going to rescue us? Why is it taking too long? It's 2,000 years. He said, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. We also believe that the seventh seal is uh, is open, and the first trumpet with well, when the first seal is opened, and the first trumpet is blown, then the events will come in rapid succession, and we believe that, okay? Because here. When you op go into the seven trumpets, what precedes the seven trumpets? What precedes the seven trumpets? The ceiling of the 144,000. Okay. And we believe that once it happens, you know, it will happen relatively quickly. Okay. And then the time of the seven trumpet will run... How long? We don't know. Will it run for another 2,000 years? I don't think so. Okay? The abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel will herald the start, most probably, of the seventh trumpet, which is the seven plagues. Yet, it is a time of repentance for mankind. Okay? So, prior to the seventh plague, ano yung uh, event the two witnesses the beast the uh, abomination that causes desolation okay and all of these things will happen and as mentioned in the scripture and emphasized by male it is three and a half years to the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ okay so when you see the abomination that causes desolation. You can count 42 months. When you see the two witnesses preaching in Jerusalem, okay, then you know it's three and a half years. And they would come on the scene simultaneously. Okay? And that precedes the seven plagues because the two witnesses can perform all those miracles. He can bring plagues as often as they want. And people hated them, you know, because they were the cause of all the plagues that they are suffering. Okay? Count three and a half years to the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we read this. They have the power to shut up the heavens. So that it will not rain during the time that they are prophesying. 
They have the power to turn waters into blood. They can turn the sea into blood. They can turn the rivers into blood. And to strike earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Therefore, the Revelation account suggests that the first plague comes. And, you know, when the first plague comes, it will happen at the time of the two witnesses. Within the time of the abomination uh, that causes desolation, you know, done by the beast and the false prophet. And the two witnesses have the authority to strike the earth with every kind of plagues as often as they wish. The seven plagues of the seven seal or the seven trumpet will might happen during this particular period now in summary you know, now that you have read you know the pages uh, of your bible uh, we have presented the book of revelation that you have seen the blow by blow account of the coming apocalypse as revealed by jesus christ so like john you have seen the future, you know, and now you're back here. But nakita mo the future, and now you're back to the present. You too had the opportunity to see the future in vision, and there is no need for speculation. So people speculated, you know, what the the uh, the, the the book of Revelation is, right? There is no need for speculation. There is no need for guesswork. There is no need for personal interpretation. To understand the end time events, Jesus has plainly revealed them to John and now to you, to all of us. Okay? You saw it all as they were unfolding before your eyes as Mel was describing them to you. Jesus said, Blessed is anyone who reads the word of the prophecy, and blessed are those who take it to heart. So there's a blessing of reading. There's a blessing of understanding, and there is a blessing if you take it to heart. And I'm saying, why such a blessing? Why is there a blessing pronounced on this? Okay? Because there's assurance of the words of prophecy, you know, given in Revelation. Okay? He said here, And the angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. Okay? Okay, these words are trustworthy and they are true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophet, sent his angels to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Revelation chapter 22. And now in verse 7. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who gives the word of the prophecy written in the scrolls. Okay? So, the blessing that was spoken of in chapter 1 verses, verse 3 you know, the way that you understand prophecy, okay, and the blessing here at the ending of the book of Revelation, Revelation 22, they're basically the same. Okay, there's this blessing if you keep the words of this prophecy. He said, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and seen this, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been shown them to me. And he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the word of the scroll. He said, instead, worship God. Then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of the scroll because the time is near. So do not keep it, you know, or store it, you know, and, and not do anything with it. He said, do not seal it up. Instead, we go out and we preach and we share let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the, one, the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the person, holy person continue to be holy. He said, look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. Okay, what is this? The, the vile continue to be vile. The righteous continue to be righteous. The holy continue to be holy. You know, when, you pe when people read this book of Revelation, they will take it in very uh, different ways. You know, the vile will say, ah, wala kwenta yan, mali yan. You know, I don't believe in this. They'll continue in the evil ways. 
Why? Because they will not change their ways. These are God's call for people to repent and change their ways that they may be saved. Some people will change because of this and the way they understand it. Some people will not. You know, some people who are holy will continue to be holy because they understood these things. Some people will continue to do right thing because they believe that this is right. And some people will continue to do wrong thing, vile thing, because they don't believe in these things. He said, but I'm coming soon and my reward is with me. Then the warning from God, who foreknew that this book and this revelation were being bungled by many. Okay? God knew that this book of revelation, people will play with it. People will monkey it around. That people will mangle it. They will have their own personal interpretation. Left, right, center, top and down. They will tell a different story from what is being told. You know? But it's so simple. Just sets of sevens and things will happen as they are. You can, the play cannot, all cannot be ahead of the seven trumpets, neither the seven trumpets be ahead of the seals. It's impossible. It has been read sequentially, chapter by chapter. And God is a God of order. It's so clear. That is why it's a revelation of Jesus Christ to His people. If we don't understand it, we're not God's people. And people say it's a mystery. It's not. It's so simple to understand. And I hope you do understand. Right? He said, I warn everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of this scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. Scary. And we hope that we didn't add anything because we just read for you. Right? Don't want to add. If anyone adds word, if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are prescribed in this scroll. Scary things. So we cannot add neither we subscribe. And then I ask, why? Why so strict? Because this book is so important. That you cannot add, you cannot subtract. Okay, why? If you add if you, or you subtract, you lead people away from the truth. You lead people away from the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay? He who testifies to these things says, I, yes, I am coming. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. So, Please take this prophecy to heart. Okay? This presentation may conflict with your long-held belief. You might not have believed it has to be read sequentially. Okay? You might not have believed that the ceiling of the 144,000 will precede the blowing of the trumpet. You might not have believed that the two witnesses will appear before the plagues. Or you, have never, or you haven't even considered in the past. You know? But please do consider. Why? Just a question. Okay? It's a question. Three cannot be ahead of the two, neither can eleven be ahead of the nine. And that's how it is written. Yeah? This presentation may conflict with your whole long-held belief. You might have heard of a different story or a different interpretation, okay? That the 144 might already be in heaven. But these are things that are to soon take place. None of this ever happened prior to Jesus Christ. Right? That's a revelation. Things that are to happen. Okay? Nothing of that happened prior to the writing. Everything happened Forward, moving forward to the time of its revelation. The key is not to believe anyone, but to believe in your Bible. So where are we now in prophecy? This is a chart. 
The last days starts with the first advent of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay? And this is the start of the seals. Okay? And the day of the Lord will be here. Okay? The day of God's wrath. Because three and a half years from here is the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay? This is where all the plagues will happen, the appearance of the two witnesses, and the protection of the church moving forward. Okay? So this is the first coming. Okay? This is the start of the plagues. And this is the actual return of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, where are we in prophecy? You said, not me said, we're not here. Right? You said that we are here. So, where are we here? And you said that we are in between the fifth and the sixth. Okay? So, the question is, where are we in prophecy? You just answered your own question, right? You just answered the question. This is where we are. Okay. So please don't tell me that in five years' time will be the end of the world. Okay? If you tell me that, that means you're not listening. Okay. Or even in ten years' time. Okay. And you might tell me, Winston, ang layo pa natin, ah. <laughs> layo pa. Maybe, right? Yeah. But definitely, we are not here yet. And we don't know how long that will be, to be honest. Okay. Right. Brethren, you are blessed when you know this prophecy because you will no longer be deceived. Instead, this knowledge will increase your faith in Christ as you wait for His appearing or reappearing. Therefore, may you all be blessed or we all be blessed with the knowledge and the wisdom that God has revealed to all of us. So with that, we thank you for coming. And fellowshipping with us. Uh -huh.